Good morning, everyone. Lisa Martin with theCUBE, live at the eighth annual Women in Data Science Conference. This is one of my absolute favorite events of the year. We engage with tons of great, inspirational speakers, men and women, and what's happening with Wiz is a global movement. I've got two fabulous co-hosts with me today that you're going to be hearing and meeting. Please welcome Tracy Zhang and Hannah Freitag, who are both from the Data Journalism Program, Master's Program at Stanford. So great to have you guys. <laughs> so excited to be here. <laughs> so data journalism, so interesting. Tracy, tell us a little bit about you, what you're interested in, and then Hannah will have you do the same thing. Yeah, yeah definitely. I definitely think data journalism is very interesting, and in fact, I think data, like what is data journalism is definitely one of the big questions that we ask during the span of one year, which is the length of our program. And yeah, I'm, like you said, I'm in this data journalism master program, and I think coming in, I just wanted to pivot from my undergrad studies, which is more like a traditional journalism, into like data, we're finding stories through data, so that's why I'm also very excited about meeting these speakers for today, because they're all, they have different backgrounds, but yeah. they all ended up in data science. Yeah. So I think they'll be very inspirational, and I'm, I can't wait to talk to them. Data in stories, I love that. Hannah, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so before coming to Stanford, I was a research assistant at Humboldt University in Berlin, so I was in political science research, and I love to work with data sets and data, but I um, figured that for me, I don't want this, like, the story to end up in a research paper, which is only very limited, like in terms of the audience. And I figured, okay, data journalism is the perfect way to tell stories and use data um, to illustrate anecdotes, but to you know make it comprehensive and accessible for a broader audience. So then I found this program at Stanford, and I was like, okay, that's a perfect transition from like political science to journalism and to use data um, to you know tell data-driven stories. So I'm excited to be in this program. I'm excited for the conference today and yeah. to hear from these amazing women who work in data science. You both brought up great points when we were chatting earlier that there's a lot of diversity in background. Definitely. Uh, not everyone was in STEM as a, a young kid mm -hmm. or studied computer science. Maybe some are engineering. Maybe some are, are philosophy or economics. It's so interesting. What I find, year after year at WIDS is it brings in so much thought diversity. Mm -hmm. And that's what being data driven really demands. Mm -hmm. It demands that unbiased approach, that diverse, a spectrum of diverse perspectives. And we definitely get that at WIDS. Um, there's about 350 people in person here, but as I mentioned in the opening, hundreds of thousands will engage throughout the year, tens of mm -hmm. thousands probably today at local events going on across yeah. the globe. And it just underscores the importance of every organization, whether it's a bank or a grocer, has to be data driven. Right. Yeah. We have that expectation as consumers in our consumer Definitely. lives, and even in our business lives, that yeah. I'm going to engage with a business, whatever it is, and they're going to know about me, they're going to deliver me a personalized experience yeah. that's relevant to me and my history, and yeah. all that is powered by data science, which is, I think yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah, and the great way is if you like combine data with people, you know, because after all, like large data sets, they oftentimes consist of like stories or, you know, um, data that affects people and to, you know, find these like stories or like um, advanced research in whatever fields, like may it be in the financial business or in health, as you mentioned, the, the variety of fields, it's very powerful, powerful tool um, to use. It's yeah. a very powerful, go, oh, go ahead Tracy. No, definitely, I wanted, just wanted to build off of that, like it's important to put a face on data, so the, the, the data set without a name is just some like numbers, but if there's mm. a story, then I think it means something too. And I think um, Margot was talking about how like data science is about knowing, understanding the past, yeah. I think that's very interesting. That's like we a method for us to know who we are. Definitely, there's so many opportunities. I wanted to share some of the statistics from anitab.org that I was just looking at from 2022. You know, we, we always talk at events like WIDS and some of the other women in tech things. The Cube is very much pro women in tech and has been for a very long time, since the beginning of the Cube. But we've seen the numbers of women technologists historically well below 25%. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. see attrition rates are high. Mm -hmm. And so we often talk about, well, what can we do? And part of that is, is raising the awareness. And that's one of the great things about WIDS, especially WIDS happening on International Women's Day, today, March yeah. 8th. Happy and around holidays. the event. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but one of the nice things I was looking at the anitab.org research is that representation of tech women is on the rise. Mm -hmm. 
it's still below pre-pandemic levels, but it's actually nearly 27% of women in technical roles, and that's an increase. Slow increase, but the needle is moving. We're seeing much more gender diversity across a lot of career levels, which is exciting. Um, but some of the challenges remain. I mean, the representation of women technologists is growing, except at the intern level. And I thought that was really poignant. Like, mm -hmm. we need to be opening up that pipeline and going younger. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear a lot of those conversations today um, about what are we doing to, to reach girls in grade school? 10 year olds, 12 year olds, mm -hmm. those in high school. How do we help foster mm -hmm. them through their uh, their their um, undergrad studies mm -hmm. and, and excite them about yes. yeah science and all these fields for sure. What do you think, Hannah? On that note, and I'll ask you the same question. What do you think can be done? The theme of this year's International Women's Day is embrace equity. What do you think can be done on that intern problem to help really? dial up the volume on getting those younger kids interested, one, earlier, and two, helping them stay interested. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's a great question. I think it's important to start early, as you said, in school. Um, back in the day when I w went to high school, we had like this one day um, per year where we could explore, as, as girls, explore like a STEM job and go into the job for one day and see how it's like to work in a, I don't know, in um, IT or in, in data science, so that's a great first step. But as you mentioned, it's important to you know, keep girls and women excited about this field and make them actually pursue this path. So I think conferences or like networking is very powerful. Also these days with social media and technology, we have more um, ability and greater ways to connect. And I think um, we should even like empower ourselves even more to you know um, pursue this path if we're interested in data science and not be like, okay, maybe it's not for me or maybe as a woman I have like less chances, you know? So I think it's very important to connect with other women and this is what Wiz is great about. It, yeah. Wiz is so fantastic for that network of as you talked about. Yeah. It's always such as I was telling you about before we went live, I've covered five or six WIDs for theCUBE, and it's always such a day of positivity. Yeah. It's a day of, of inclusivity, which yeah. is exactly what Embrace Equity is really kind of about. Tracy, talk a little bit about some of the things that you see that will help with that hashtag Embrace Equity, kind of pulling it in, not just to tech, yeah. because we're talking and we saw, we saw um, Meta was a keynote who's going to come to the to talk with, with Hannah yeah. and me in a little bit. We see Total Energies on the program mm -hmm. today. We see Microsoft, Intuit, um, Boeing, Air Company. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you think that can be done to help inspire, say, little Tracy back in the day <laughs> to become interested in, in STEM or in technology mm -hmm. or in data? What do you think companies can and should be doing to dial up the volume in, for those youngsters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think somebody was talking about, like one of the keynote speakers was talking about how um, there is a notion that girls just can't be data scientists, girls just can't do science, and I think like representation definitely matters. Like if three-year-old me see on TV that all the scientists are women, I think like I would definitely have the notion that, oh, this might be a career choice for me and I can definitely also be a scientist if I want. So yeah, I think like representation definitely matters and that's why like conference like this will like just show us how these women are great in their fields. They're great data scientists that are bringing like great insights to the company and even like to the social good as well. So yeah, I think that's very important to like just to make women feel seen yes. in the data science field and to like listen to the great woman who's doing amazing work. Absolutely, you know, there's a saying, you can't be what you can't see. Exactly. And I like to say, I like to flip it on its head, because we can talk about some of the negatives, but there's a lot of positives, and I want to share some of those in a minute, is that we need to be, the, the visibility that you talked about, the awareness that you talked about, it needs to be there, but it needs to be sustained and maintained, and an organization like WIDS, and some of the other women in tech events that um, happen around the valley here and, and globally, are all aimed at raising the profile of these women so that the younger, really all generations, can see what they can be. We all, right. the funny thing is, we all have this expectation, whether we're, we're transacting on Uber Ride, or we are on Netflix, mm -hmm. or we're buying something on Amazon, we can get it like that, they're going to know who I am, they're going to know what I want, they're going to want to know what I just bought or what I just watched. Don't serve me up something that, I've already done that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that expectation that everyone has is all about data, though mm -hmm. we don't necessarily think about it like exactly. that. Exactly. But yeah. it's all about the data, that the past data, the data mm -hmm. science, as well as the real-time data, because we want to have these experiences that are fresh in the moment and super relevant. So whether women recognize it or not, they're data driven too, mm -hmm. whether or not you're in data science. It's, we're all driven by data exactly. and we have these expectations that mm -hmm. every business is going to meet it. Exactly. Yeah, and circling back to young women, I think it's crucial and important to have role models. As you said, like if you see someone and you're like younger and you're like, oh, I want to be like her. I want to like, follow this path and you know, have like inspiration and a role model, someone you look up to and be like, okay, this is possible if I study the math part or do the physics and you know, you kind of have a goal and like a vision in mind. I think that's really important that to drive you. It definitely, having those mentors and sponsors, you know, something that's interesting is, I always, everyone knows what a mentor is, yeah. somebody that you look up to, yeah. that you, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that can guide you, that you admire. I didn't learn what a sponsor was until a Women in Tech event a few years ago that we did on theCUBE. And I was kind of, my eyes were open, I'm like, I didn't understand the difference between mm -hmm. a mentor and a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And they sort of think, got me thinking, who are my sponsors? And I started going through LinkedIn, oh, he's a sponsor? She's a sponsor, mm. people that help really propel you forward, yeah. your recommenders, your champions, and it's so important at every level to build that network. Mm. And we have, yeah, sure. to your point, Hannah, there's so much potential here for, for data-driven-ness across mm -hmm. the globe, mm -hmm. and there's so much potential for women. One of the things I also learned recently, and I, and I wanted to share this with you, because I'm not sure if you know this, yeah. uh -huh. ChatGPT. <laughs> Exploding. I was on it yeah. yesterday Everyone looking at- Everyone talking about yeah. What's hot in data science? <laughs> and it was kind of like, and I, I actually asked it, what was hot in data science in 2023? And it told mm -hmm. me that it, it didn't know anything prior to right. 2021. Yes. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but everyone's talking about chat GPT. It's, mm -hmm. It is the most advanced AI chatbot ever released to the masses. It's right. on fire. Mm -hmm. They're likening it to the launch of the iPhone. Mm -hmm. 100 million plus users. But did you know that the CTO of ChatGPT is a woman? I did not know, but I, I learned love that. I learned that a couple days ago. Mira Marathi. Mm -hmm. And of course, I love it. <laughs> she's been, I saw this great profile piece on her on um, Fast Company. Mm -hmm. But of course, everything that we're hearing about with respect to ChatGPT, a lot on the C CEO. Yeah. But I thought, we need to help dial up the profile of the CTO because she's only 35, yet she is at the helm of one of the most groundbreaking things in mm -hmm. our lifetime we'll probably That's, ever wow. see. Isn't that cool? That is, wait, I, yeah, I had completely had no idea. I didn't either. I saw it on LinkedIn over the weekend. I thought, I have to talk about that because it's so important when we talk about some of the trends, mm -hmm. the uh, other trends from anedb.org, mm -hmm. you know, I talked about some of those positive trends. Overall hiring has rebounded mm -hmm. uh, in 22 compared mm -hmm. to pre-pandemic levels. And we see also 51% um, more women being hired in 22 than 21. So the data, yeah. It's all about data. <laughs> it's showing us mm. things are progressing quite silly. Yeah. But one of the biggest challenges that's still persistent is attrition. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about, Hannah, what would your advice be? How would you help a woman stay in tech? We saw that attrition last year in 22, mm -hmm. according to anitab.org, mm -hmm. more than doubled. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing women getting into the field and dropping up for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's still an extant concern that we have. Right. What, what do you think? Would, would motivate you mm -hmm. to stick around in, if you were in a technical role? Mm -hmm. Same question for you in a minute. Right, like you were talking about how there we see an increase, especially in the intern level for women. And I think like if, I don't know, like if I, like this is a great for a start point for like pushing the momentum to like start growth, like pushing the needle to right, like rightwards. But I think if like we can see more increase in the upper level, like the women representation in the yeah. upper level yeah. too, like maybe that's th definitely a big goal and something we should work towards too. Absolutely. But if like, there's more representation up in the CTO position, yes. like in the managing yeah. level, yes. I think that will definitely be a great factor to keep women in data science. I was looking at some trends, sorry Hannah, yeah. um, forgetting what the source was, so forgive me that was showing that there was a trend in the last few years, I think it was Fast Company, mm -hmm. of more women in executive positions, and mm -hmm. CEO, specifically chief operating officer positions. What that hasn't translated to, what they thought it might translate to, mm -hmm. is more women going from COO to CEO, and we're mm -hmm. not seeing that. Mm -hmm. You know, we think of, if you ask, name a female executive that you'd recognize, everyone would probably say Sheryl Sandberg, mm -hmm. but I was um, shocked to learn 
the other day at a, at a women in tech event I was doing that, that there was a survey done by this organization that showed that 78% of people couldn't identify. Hmm. Yeah. So and to your point, we need more of them in that visible role in the executive suite. Exactly. And there's data that show that companies that have women, companies across industries that have women in leadership positions, mm -hmm. executive positions I should mm -hmm. say, yeah. are actually more profitable. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, duh, the data is yeah. there, it's <laughs> telling you this. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And I think also a very important point is work culture and the vo work environment. Yeah. And as a woman, maybe if you enter and you work like two or three years, and then you have to oftentimes choose, okay, do I want family or do I want my job? You right. know, And I think that's one of the major tasks that companies face to you know make it possible for women to combine being a mother and being a great data scientist or you know um, an executive or CEO yeah. you know mm -hmm. and I think that's um, there's still a lot to be done in this regard mm -hmm. to um, yeah make it possible for women to mm -hmm. not have to choose yeah. for one thing or the yeah. other and I think that's also a reason why we might see more women at the entry level but not long term because yes. um, they are punished if they take yeah. Um, a couple years off if they want to have kids. I think that's a question we a need to ask to men too, like how Absolutely. to balance mm -hmm. with work and life. Yes. We never ask uh, that. We just ask like, how do you no, ask a they woman? Just, they just get it done probably right? because there's <laughs> a woman on the other end who's exactly. making it happen. So yeah. Another thing to think about, another thing to like work to towards yeah. too. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point you're raising that we have this conversation together and not exclusively only women, yeah, but exactly, we all have yeah. to come together and you know <laughs> talk about how we can design companies in a way that it works yeah. for everyone. Yeah, you know, and, and no slant to men at all. A lot of my mentors and sponsors are men. They're just people that I greatly admire who saw raw potential in me 15, 18 years ago and oh. just added a little water to this like little weed and it oh. started to grow. And in fact, and the look cube, at you now. Look at me now. Yeah. And the cube, the guys, Dave Vellante, John Furrier, are two of those people that are sponsors of mine. Mm. But you, we need, it needs to be diverse. Mm. It needs to be diverse in gender. It needs to include non-binary people. Anybody shouldn't matter. We should be able to collectively work together to solve big problems, like the propaganda problem that was being discussed in the keynote right. this morning with respect to China, <laughs> or climate change. Climate change is a huge challenge. Yeah. We're Here we are in California, we're getting an atmospheric river tomorrow, and Californians and, and rain, we're not so friendly. Mm -hmm. But we know that there's massive changes going on in the climate. Data yeah. science can help really unlock a lot of the challenges and solve some of the mm -hmm. problems and help us understand better. So there's so much mm -hmm. real world implication potential that Definitely. being data driven mm -hmm. can really lead to. And I love the mm -hmm. fact that you guys are studying data journalism. <laughs> You'll have to help me understand that even more. But <laughs> we're going to have great conversations today. I'm so excited we to are. be co-hosting with oh, both yeah. of you. Just, you're going to be inspired, you're going to learn. They're going to learn from us as well. So let's just yeah. kind of think of this as, as a, a community of mm -hmm. men and women, everything in between, yeah. to really help inspire the current generations, the future generations. And to your point, let's help women feel confident to be able to stay and raise their hand for fast-tracking their yeah, careers. Sweet. What are you guys, last, last minute, what are you looking forward to most for today? Just meeting these great women, I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, learning from each other, having this conversation about how, yeah, we can make data science even more equitable and, yeah, hear from the great ideas that all these women have. Excellent, girls, we're going to have a great day. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us on theCUBE, live at Stanford University, Women in Data Science, the eighth annual conference. I'm Lisa Martin, my two co-hosts for the day, Tracy Zhang, Hannah Freitag, you're going to be seeing a lot of us. We appreciate, stick around. Our first guest joins Hannah and me in just a minute.